<laughs> Welcome back. So today is a bee friendly plant, a, a, a flower species I'd like to highlight as being particularly good to grow in your garden if you want to attract. Well, what's that? Well, my children having an accident. Uh, particularly good plant to grow if uh, you want to encourage bumblebees and other pollinators in the garden. Well today's plant uh, is, you can see them behind me, foxgloves. Uh, where it's the 10th of June today and the foxgloves are in mid kind of flower. And I have to say I'm very pleased with my, my foxgloves this year. It's probably the best showing they've ever made. And they look absolutely glorious and despite the fact that it's a pretty cold day. What's, what's, where's our summer gone? Anyway, um, despite that, there are still plenty of bumblebees to be seen. And uh, let, me, let me see what I can film for you and tell you about. So, bear with me. So, almost all the bumblebees visiting these flowers are one of two species. There are mostly their garden bumblebees, and a few of them the common carders. So there's one. Just him. Oh, there he goes. She goes, I should say. More down here. Hard to track because you can't see them when they're in the flower very easily. So that's a garden bumblebee. Just went in there. Let's just wait for her to come out. There she goes. And then we've got here, I oh know, there's a common card, but it's actually on some comfrey. Find you, they're all brown, easy to identify. Whoa. So this is another garden bumblebee, just gone in here. So why are they all garden bumblebees? Well, um, all common carders, because they've got long tongues and foxgloves have these deep tubular flowers that uh, have bristles inside them. They're hard to see, but you'll have to trust me. There are bristles that stop the bee climbing right to the end of the tube. The nectar is up here where I'm tapping. And so the bee can only go in about halfway up the flower and then it has to reach with its tongue the rest of the way to reach the nectar. Now garden bumblebees have the longest tongue of any common British bumblebee. And uh, so it's, it's about 15 millimetres long, which is um, nearly as long as the insect itself. Um, and so it's adapted to visiting deep flowers like foxgloves, aquilegia, honeysuckle, and so on. And uh, it means that, that other bees, shorter tongue bees, can't access these flowers, so there's less competition. So on average, the, the, the plants are more rewarding. Um, it's a risky strategy for the plant you, you, when you think about it. It's specialising, it's excluding most of the insects that might have liked to pollinate it. But uh, on the other hand, um, by evolving into a kind of more um, obligate relationship, one where both the bee and the plant are more dependent on each other, um, perhaps in some ways that provides a better quality of pollination service because the bees are it's starting to rain, that's not very helpful. <laughs> because the, uh, the, there aren't that many deep flowers for garden bumblebees to visit, so they do a good job of pollinating the ones they do visit because they're not constantly flitting between species and transferring pollen between different species, which is, of course is no good to the plant. Possibly, that's a bit of a potted explanation, but it'll have to do. Anyway, I hope you'll agree the foxgloves are absolutely glorious. One of my favourites, of course, the native wildflower. Um, really easy to grow and uh, grow from seed. They are biennials, so I love these the, flat, the patterns on the inside of the flowers. Amazing things. Um, really easy to grow. And the, the, the seed pods that are forming when they dry, they split open and they re release thousands of seeds, tiny little brown seeds. Uh, sprinkle them around the garden. The foxgloves will grow in partial shade very happily. 
and I find they just pop up all over the place. I don't have to do much to encourage them. Uh, of course, it's, as I mentioned, a native wildflower, so you're helping to support a native plant species as well as our native bee species if you grow it. And as you can see, I like to encourage lots of native wildflowers in my, in my garden. Okay, uh, that's it from me today. I um, hope you've enjoyed this latest update. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear whatever plant I highlight next week. And uh, uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.